Good morning, folks. Huge day in observer world. Got a geomagnetic storm, big quake, volcano, the most beautiful recurrent nova I've ever seen, and a special video aiming for release tonight. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we've potentially got a CME coming at Earth. Big filament behind the southern coronal hole destabilized and lifted off into space. Soho, Lasco wasn't updated enough in the pre-sunrise hours, but Stereo A is, behind Earth's orbit, looking from the side, Earth off to the right. Clearly, the eruption from the filament is a wide burst, and while it will likely impact Earth, it is mostly a scientific exercise as it will be weak to moderate in strength. Last night, as the satellites began to detect enhanced solar wind a million miles upstream at L1, the geomagnetic system was calm. But the expected coronal hole stream arrived as the day shifted in UTC time, bringing a moderately strong surge to the auroral electrojet. The solar wind itself presented with a density increase as the leading shockwave of the coronal hole stream, followed by a ramp up in plasma speed and temperature, purple and green at the bottom. We are now in a level 2 geomagnetic storm this morning, not expected to get scary, but some reverberations will persist probably at least a day. Folks with the coronal hole and geomagnetic indices in play, our app users got the global high watch alert yesterday just a few hours before a strong blood echo occurred in Japan. Damage reports aren't in yet from this one, but it was right offshore Fukushima in the exact same place as the 2011 shake. This happens, but it wasn't exactly fun reading this paper while the quake happened. It suggests there is at least one more super thrust coming to the area in the near future. Folks, the Iceland volcano we've been clamoring about is finally erupting. Effusively. It's not threatening nearby towns. They didn't need to shut down their airspace, but they didn't know that at the time. First one in this part of Iceland in nearly 900 years. Couple more pieces of eye candy here, if I may presume we just did one. First, it's the ESA and their new biodiversity mapping. Green would be a high score for the area, and apart from actual green or brown visibility, photosynthesis, or bioproductivity, the biodiversity of a region is an important indicator of ecological health. Atmospheric health up next. Three years of brand new aerosol monitoring have been put into a 3D graphic showing where the stratospheric aerosols are coming from, mostly volcanoes and wildfires. For new viewers, you might not know that Earth is at record low volcanic cooling from these aerosols. It married Holocene maximum solar forcing to make the planet warmer last century, but it can't last forever. The smaller eruptions we're getting these days don't do anything in terms of cooling at all. The few bits we've seen make the stratosphere the last few years are not major. The record low aerosol cooling continues. One big volcano, for which the Earth is long overdue, would light up the entire column and persist much longer than these. Up next, a great nod from Boulder just a few days after we learned that Greenland must have greened far more recently than they imagined. Much being said similar for the Arctic. I submit putting it at the equator is the best way to do that. Two from the Quaternary Research Journal up next, the first one confirming the younger driest cold period at Gothenburg Magnetic Excursion, and it was first wet and cold and then dry and cold. This is due to the new ice locked in glaciers after the event. And second, this is the fourth or fifth time I've seen studies comparing the western and eastern Rockies in terms of the last ice age. Once again, the east winds, as it once again appears the west was stuck under the ice for much, much longer. Arctic at the equator. Volcanic upticks, magnetic excursion, ice event, all building to or from a solar micronova crescendo coming soon. The sun's 12,000 year event might look something like Abel 78 in the immediate aftermath, where the aliens around this recurrent nova star, which you can see is left behind to boom again in the future as it did in the past, are probably right now making up stories about Thor and the pretty ice bridges in the system that will fade away in time, just as they did here. Had a bit of fun with that last one, but only sort of. Folks, go to suspiciousobservers.org and right below the daily news video, you'll find the disaster playlist. Catch up because we're going to release the third advanced catastrophism video, hopefully tonight. You will want to be caught up, put it that way. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.